Well, this week marked two years since Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin handcuffed George Floyd, pinned him face down on the street and fatally choked him, sparking a global reckoning on race and policing. The world of sport was at the forefront of that reckoning, taking the knee, inspired by Colin Kaepernick's race protest in America, became a global sporting gesture. But two years on, is taking the knee still having the same impact? Well, joining me now is Michael Holding, one of the greatest cricketers of all time, who says, if you don't kneel, I know where you stand. Michael, fantastic to speak to you. Thank you for joining the show. Thanks for having me, Pierce. Glad to be with you. I read your book uh, a few months ago, and I, I sent a note to you via your agent just saying how incredibly moved I was by the book. It is, without a doubt, the most powerful book about racism and hopeful in many ways that I think I've ever read, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, and at the forefront of it is why we kneel, how we rise. And I think my question for you right now, as we get to a stage where, in football, Certain teams now in the Premier League have begun not to take the knee. Certain black players, Wilfred Zaha at Crystal Palace and so on, have decided that they're not going to do it anymore because they think it's become ineffective. This debate about whether sporting teams should continue to do it and whether it's still effective is now beginning to, to be had. What is your view? Pierce, I, as far as I'm concerned, taking a knee should not be a ticking the box exercise. If you believe in what you are talking about, about the racism and trying to change what's happening and trying to make the world a better world, taking a knee is a gesture that has been accepted around the world as, yes, I believe this, I am joining with you, I support you, so I'm signaling to you and everyone else that I am with you. That's what I see taking a knee as. Now, it is obvious that a lot of people do not believe that taking the knee has had any impact at all. Because yes, you don't want to be just taking the knee and nothing else happens. What's the point of taking the knee if nothing happens? But taking the knee should not then say to you, well, nothing is happening, I can stop taking the knee. Because if you stop taking the knee, that is signaling to everyone, I'm satisfied with what is going on. Everything has changed, I'm happy now I no longer need to take the knee. It is a prerequisite, Pierce, to action. Right. That is what I look at taking in the ads. You know, when I go and watch Arsenal, my football team, I'm always struck by 60,000 people all applaud, all of them. There's never a single boo when the players, many of whom are black in the Arsenal team, take the knee. There's a lot of respect now for it, whereas at the start, there was quite a lot of animosity at certain clubs. Now I feel it's become part of football, and I like that, you know, and I think it is an important part. Here's my other question for you, though. You've had a player at Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, it wasn't about taking the knee, but it was about whether he should wear the LGBT colours for, for PSG when they played a game. He's from Senegal, and he decided he didn't want to do that and didn't play. Should players, whether it's taking the knee against racism, whether it's an LGBT uh, protest, whatever it may be, should any players for any kind of sport be compelled to do it? Or what is your view? No, I don't believe anyone should be compelled to do anything like that, Pierce. You, you support it wholeheartedly or not. Nobody should be compelling people to support any cause. If you do not believe in it, you don't support it. That is my belief. I just want to see people acknowledging that things are not right, whatever the issue is. You either acknowledge it and you say, yes, things are not right, and I'm going to support whatever you are doing, or you say to yourself, no, I don't believe that what you're supporting is right. I'm not going to support whatever you are supporting. It's as simple as that. I don't see how you can dictate to anyone and say, you have to take the knee, right. or you have to wear this shirt, or you have to... Do I don't believe in that. I don't believe in forcing people to be supporting things they don't believe in. No, I agree. I think, I, think it, I think it has the opposite effect if you do that. Just finally, Michael, do, do you feel, two years on from what happened to George Floyd, that the aftermath of that was so gigantic around the world? There was a real movement, wasn't there, rising up against what had happened. But do you feel there's been substantive progress now in the battle against racial injustice since then? I definitely believe that. I've seen enough for me to believe, Pierce, that there has been action and people have you now awake to the situation. A lot of people have been going through their lives. 
they have been comfortable. Nothing has affected them as far as racing is concerned. And they have just drifted along. They have just floated on the tide. A lot of people have now realized that something is wrong and they are willing to join the fight. I have had too much positive feedback from this book that I have written. I've had too much positive feedback from what other people have said and done for me to not recognize that people are coming to see that there's a problem and people are willing to work towards solving this problem. You see, a lot of people used to walk around Pierce and say, oh, I'm not racist. I don't have a problem. I don't have to support anything. I know what I am. But the times of just being not racist are over. You have now got to be anti-racist. You have got to show people that those who are racist, racist are wrong. Yes. And you're going to tell them that they are wrong. So yeah. that people recognize that, yes, it's not the way to go. Michael, uh, you brought me enormous pleasure as a cricketer, one of the greatest fast bowlers that ever lived. Uh, you've brought me a, a lot of thought, uh, constructive thought with this book. It's a magnificent book. I urge everyone to read it, Why We Kneel, How We Rise. I think you're a force for such good in this debate because you come at it from a place of love and you just want people to understand what it's about. This book made me really understand it in a way that no other book has done. So thank you for writing it and keep going because we're all right behind you. Thank you very much, Pierce. I hope the book does what I'm trying to do to get everyone, all races, all creeds, to understand that we're all human beings and the world is a much better place if we are all together. We're all humans. Just let us all get together and make the world a better place. Absolutely. Michael, great to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining me.